It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. This episode was originally released November 26th, 2008. So you want me to be the announcer for the beginning of this episode? Yes, that's correct, and we're rolling. You know I have to charge time and a half because I came here on very short notice. Oh, sure, no problem. Huh? All right. Um, this is episode 79 of Bells in the Bat Free. Go on. Well, what else do you want me to say? Oh, the Mr. Bell, what do you want to say next? Clocky, caraca, spindle, locopati, cat, clatu, barata, nictor, decatacina, papacala, caputusumada. Mm-hmm. Can you say that, please? You want me to say what he said? Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, paka, laka, maka, waka, haka, oh. staka, shlaka. Ah, that's right. You don't understand the language he's speaking, which is Finlayson, the uh, official language of Babenstan, a small, obscure little country. So I will whisper to you what you need to say. You ready? Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I didn't say anything funny. That <laughs> tickles. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Last time, as you recall, <laughs> Arnie came up with a brilliant invention, <laughs> the likes of which have never been seen before, but generally confirm that Arnie is the greatest genius the world has ever... What'd he say? I couldn't tell you specifically, but I think I got the gist of it. You're an awful wet talker. Arnie's translator later made Mr. Bell speak this obscure language, but uh, took away his ability to speak English. <laughs> That's pretty stupid. No, it's not. It's brilliant. So, Mr. Bell cannot speak English, and that's where we pick up this episode. And I waive my salary for the... Hey! <laughs> nice try, though. Thanks. You can go now. Stupidest gig I've got. I wish they were hiring over the weird show. So, Mr. Bell, I have reconfigurated my translator later so that when I throw the switch, you can speak English again. Are you sure you want me to do it right now? Proto, proto, get like a proto. I mean, there's not much chance that somebody's going to come stumbling through the door speaking only Finlayson, which only you can understand because that's the only language you can understand, right? I mean, how cheesy could you get? <laughs> Mr. Bell is speaking Finlayson. Mr. Bell, what did he say? What did he say? Gromska machinka. I don't understand you. What did he say? What did he Gonska say? Gonska Masinka. I don't understand you. Maybe I should turn on my machine. Gonska. Ay, but I can take up autoris. Power on. Ow. Subliminal obfuscator <laughs> at four. Oh, 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 oh. Get it cranked up and here we go. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. Did it work, uh, Mr. Bell? Ooh. Did it work? Can you speak English again? Yes. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Uh, Bell. I know Arnie, these things no. don't always work well. It worked, you, Arnie. You are speaking. It yes, worked. I am speaking English, Arnie. Thank you. Wow, I didn't see that coming at all. So what did the guy from uh, Babenstein tell you before he expired? What? Expired. Try one more time. Kick your bucket. Ah. He told me a strange tale, Arnie. It all began about 300 years ago. There was a small island nation that was very advanced because of the great king that they had. And one day, the king decided the island nation needed a name. My citizens, pay attention. We will, from this point forward, call our land Australia. Sorry, it's taken. What? It's already being used. Oh, um, we will call our land Austria. That was used to. Oh, for crying out loud. Sorry. Um... Austin! No. I don't believe this. Sorry. Why didn't we do more research on this? Well, I do. How about just Aust? Is that taken? Aust? Aust? Aust right. uh, no. We will call our land Aust! Great right decision, sir. And it came to pass that the mighty nation Aust grew even more affluent and powerful in the world. I would like to thank the gods for our prosperity by building a large statue of a noble bird. Oh, an eagle? No. A uh, falcon? No. Condor? A lark. A lark? Yes. It will build a 16-foot-high statue of a lark. A lark. Construction began immediately, and this huge lark was built, but there was just one problem. Sire, you had to spill this lark on the floodplains, and the water is eroding the legs of the lark. It will fall over. Oh, in that case, we will construct giant rubber boots, with pants included, that will come up to the waist of the lark to protect its 
legs and stomach from the water. How did we get to be so powerful anyway? And lo, these huge waders were built for this giant statue, and all was well. Then years later, Ost unfortunately was destroyed by a roving band of evil, foul... Vikings? Mongols? French poodles. Poodles? An ignominious end, but an end nonetheless. Poodles? The statue fell eventually... To the poodles. ...and was destroyed. The giant poodle choo choy The giant waders, however believed to have amazing supernatural powers disappeared. And what does this story have to do with anything in our lives, Monsieur Bell? This poor fellow from Babenstan told me that in his country there is a lead to where we could find this artifact. If we could find it, we would have great power. Oh, no. No, you're not about to tell me that we're going after... after... Waiters of the Ost Lark! And if we're going to take on this exciting adventure, the first thing we need is transportation so we can fly quickly around the world to... Wait a minute, Mr. Bell. Wait a minute. What about the dead guy? Dead guy? The dead guy right there. The guy who told you all this stuff. He came in and told you all stuff and he fell dead. No, no, no. See, he was just a way to get the plot started. Mr. Bell, he's dead. There's a dead body right but, there. But, you can't go around for a big adventure when you have a dead body here. But, Arnie, you don't understand. I... Hi-ho, everybody. It's good to see a dead body's on the floor. It's not a dead body. It's a live body? It's a dead body. No, it's 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 a plot device. Oh, poor little a plot. What? How long has Mister Device been laying? No, 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 no. His name is an a plot device. He is a Mr. plot device. Oh. Well, I think we need to have a decent burial for him. Yeah, like a six foot descent. <laughs> decent. Oh, I get a decent, decent burial. All right, all right. Listen, listen. I'll take care of it. All right. With, with dignity, dignity and, and respect? respect. Yes, I will take care of it with with dignity and respect. All right, Mister Bell. I guess that'll work. And in the meantime, Arnie, I need you to get me some trans. Transportation, some adventurous transportation to Babenstan. Right away, chief. So, uh, Hugo, uh, um, it's me. I'm the janitor. Yes. Did you take care of that little uh, task I assigned I you? I certainly did. I'm the janitor, and I take care of tasks I'm assigned to do. Uh huh. Appreciate it, Hugo. Thanks. I'll be doing assigned tasks if you need me. All right, Brad. Your part in this adventure is to be my navigator. Oh boy. I need you to set a course for Babenstan, for when Arnie gets the transportation, we can immediately... Mr. Bell? Oh, hi, Miss Schmackelheimer. This is Miss Schmackelheimer, Miss Sadie Schmackelheimer. Mer, how you, uh... I don't want to interrupt whatever little thing that you may be doing, and I'm sure it's not anything really important. However, the problem that I have is very important. There appears to be... A very dead body in my office? Uh Far be it from me to question anything that may be going on around here, because personally, I don't really care. Whatever happens here, as long as it doesn't involve me, I really have no concern. But this is a dead body, and it's in my office. I didn't order one, and I certainly don't want one, and I need to have this body out of my office and out of my space and out of my sight because it's taking up valuable Paolo space. As we all know, I need my space for Paolo. Yes, I, I mean, Paolo occupies a huge amount of space and right. I don't care how it got here. Yes. I'm not interested in, in what you may be using it for. Right, well, I just need it to be gone. Now. Right. Immediately. Okay, we'll uh, this very second. take care of that. Bye. Brad? Mr. Bell. Hugo! Mr. Bell! Hugo? Hey, Brad! Miss Schmackelheimer? Oh, dead body? Mr. Bell! Brad! Services for Mr. Device will take place in the gymnasium in two minutes. But, Brad, I'm I'm about to start a big adventure. I, I want to start this adventure before this episode ends. I want... Be there, Mr. Bell. Okay. Oh, wait, we rented the gym out for a... Oh, dear. Mr. Bell, this is Arnie. Come in, Mr. Bell. This is Arnie. Yeah, I'm right here, Arnie. Uh, what's up? Uh, over. I have 
Secure transportation, Mr. Bell is at the airport, but there's a group, a, 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 a group of evil type, uh, cult type people who want to use this aircraft before us. You have to uh, get here and fight them off. Arnie, that, that all sounds a little implausible. Well, you wanted an adventure, didn't you, Mr. Bell? So I thought I'd start for the bang. Oh. So you want to come out here and get it before they oh. do? They're going to take off it, I, and you don't get to get it. Right. You don't get an adventure. Nye, 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 nye. Uh, I appreciate it, Arnie. Okay, uh, I'm on my way, Arnie. I'll grab Brad, and we'll be there momentarily to fight off these... Uh, uh, bad guy. These uh, what? It's a cult kind of thing. Yeah, there. these cutthroat yeah. cultists. Cut, Cut up. up. Yeah, that's fine. Brad, quickly, the game is afoot. No, it's a skate. No, I mean the big adventure, our big adventure for the podcast thing. We've got to make it to the airport and do battle to win our uh, transportation. But my team's ahead, Mr. Bell. Let's Let's just go. go. All right, all right. Can I at least get some cotton candy on the way? No, they're too expensive. Plenty of snacks and Airport just ahead. Which ramp do I take here? Uh, would be a departing flight. Departing, got it. Right. Okay, there's the hangar. I bet the aircraft is in that hangar. How do I get there? Uh, um, take a right here. Here, no, here. Wait, wait, go left no, here. Go wait, around. That's it. Around here. Around this okay, one. Get, get on the tarmac. The what? The tarmac. Tarmac? The concrete thing. The runway oh, thing. Oh. Just go there. All right, here we go. They're the bad guys. Oh, no. Let's let them have it. Let them have what? I don't have much, actually. Just shoot them. Oh, right. Okay, here we go. All right, you guys, take this. Ha, ha, ha. You can't get us. Oh, that almost got us. Ha. Take this and this. And this. Look out. Here comes a big one. Oh, that was close. It certainly was. It's over this hangar. I've got your aircraft ready to go. Come on. We'll be right there, Arnie, as soon as we stop for this guy on the road. It's not really a road. It's more of a road. Stop the car. Okie dokie. Who are you and what are you doing standing in front of the car? My name is Tweedly, and I am making sure that all family safe podcasts remain that way. Well, look, we're in the middle of a big life or death adventure here. Did I hear gunfire and people being killed or mortally wounded in a family safe podcast? No. 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 Maybe. That simply will not do. Everybody go back and do it again without real firearms this time. But, but... Family safe, Mr. Bell. We must think of the children. I like children, Mr. Shut up and back up, Brad. Everybody get to your original places. Uh, Mr. Tweedley, will pop guns be okay? If it's not too violent, give it a try. All right, and... Action! All right, you guys, take this! Ho, ho, ho! Ha, ha, ha! You can't get us! Whoa, he almost got us. Ha! Take this and this! And this! Look out, here comes a big one! Ooh, Ooh that was close. It certainly was! Hold it! Hold it, what, please! What, what was wrong with that? Too much violence. What? Somebody could get an eye poked out with Ooh, one of those cuts. my eye poked out, Mr. Do it again, please! What, do it again? No pop guns. Well, what should we use this time if we can't use pop guns? Try... Water balloons. Water balloons. Yeah. Water balloons. Get a headache. Balloons. All right, everybody, back to where you were, Brad. Back up. All Let's right. go. Here we go. And action! <laughs> All right, you guys, take this. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you can't get us. Oh, we almost got us. Ha! Take this and this. And this. Look out! Here comes a big one. <laughs> Hold it, hold it. This what? will not what? do. Why not? Weapons of any sort will have to be prohibited. No weapons? Try something else. What's next? No weapons. What should we do? Call each other names? Yes, try that. Aye. Back up. And action. I think I burned out the clutch. All right, you guys, take this. Oh, oh, you're oh, oh, you, <laughs> <those> <laughs> you can't get us. And you stink. Take this and this. Oh, and you smell badly. Here comes a big one. Ooh, that was close. Stop, 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 stop. This is too, too terrible for tender little ears. I'm open to suggestion on how this can be done and keep your family-friendly rating. Excuse me, I have an idea. Oh, well, show me your idea. All righty. I like the idea, Brad. Thanks. Do you think it's appropriate for the children, though? If I had children, they'd love it. Let's get to the hangar now and head on our way! This way, Miss Bell, into the hangar. I'm warming up the engines now! Remember, kids, don't try this at home! Arnie, where are you? Where are you? Over here, Mr. Bell. You see this big, beautiful Learjet? Over here. Whoa, Arnie's done good. Yeah, Arnie. Uh, are the engines all warmed up? Are we ready to go? Yes, Mr. Bell, come on over here to this Learjet. Hurry, hurry. I call shotgun. Oh, you've done a great job, Arnie. Great job. Yeah, that's it. I'm right here on the other side of this Learjet. The other side of this. Here it is. Isn't it pretty?
It's a blimp. I think it's a dirigible. No, it's a Zeppelin. You mean Zeppelin. No, Zeppelin. Zeppelin? It used to belong to one of the Marx Brothers, so it's a Zeppelin. This is how we're going to go across the world in our exciting adventure? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I still call shotgun. All right, legends, up, throttle forward, and here we go! Um, are we there yet? We haven't quite gotten out of the hangar just yet. Give me a minute. Oh, jeez. Anybody think to pack sandwiches? Oh, yeah, they're in that cooler right there. What you got, Brad? A couple of ham. Turkey's nice and fresh. Is it? Oh, yeah. Does this mayonnaise smell funny to you? We made it! We made it! We made it! We made it! We made it. We made it. We're out of the hangar. Oh. We're up to about six feet now. So, Arnie, what's the name of this ship, anyway? Well, after the Marx Brothers owned a bunch of evil aliens that fly around these giant cubes, stole it, so they wouldn't be able to be seen by anybody. Okay. So the name of this airship is... The Hiddenborg. The, the Hiddenborg. All in favor of throwing Arnie out the porthole? Aye. Aye. <laughs> That's funny what you guys are doing. You want to let go of me? Okay, hey, guys. Hey, what you, what you, what you, you have been listening to episode oh, of Bells in the Bat Free. All contents are copyright 2000 by John Bell. No copying or rebroadcasting is allowed without express permission from John Bell, which he actually gives pretty freely. He just likes to know beforehand who is using his stuff. So don't invite trouble. Write to John Bell at jbellvoice at gmail.com. To subscribe to Bells in the Bat Free, go to thebatfree.com. You can also subscribe through iTunes. Simply search for Bells in the Bat Free at iTunes. And while you're there, why not leave a comment? Preferably a nice one, but it's a free country. Do what you want. If you enjoyed listening to Bells in the Bat Free, tell your friends. If you didn't enjoy listening, then why the heck if you listen to all of this boring stuff at the end? Thanks for listening. Join us again next time. Do you know how to fly this? Hey, Billy, why do you look so down? Aw, oh, Dad, I got a computer, a PlayStation, and a barn full of iguanas, and I'm still bored. <sighs> Gee, Billy, when I was your age, I would read lots of stories in pulp magazines. Oh, with stories of weird adventure and fantasy, horror, satire, and lots of action. Wow, that sounds great, Dad. Yeah, I sure wish there was something like that right now. <laughs> there is, Daddy-o. Who are you? I'm Dr. Mary Von Rocksprocket, host of the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour. And now there's... Yeah? Twisted Pulp Magazine! <laughs> What's that, Doctor? Why, it is a return to greatness! Available on all your digital devices! That is what it is! Look! Whoa! Dad, this looks awesome! Exciting and, dare I say it, very unwholesome. You definitely have that right, my good man. Ha <laughs> ha! Thanks, Dr. Mary. My pleasure, Billy. And just between you and me, I am not sure that this man is really your father. Bye. Dad? Uh, uh just read your Twisted Pulp magazine, Billy. Twisted Pulp magazine, available in dark alleyways behind meth labs everywhere, or at digitalvaudeville.com. That is D-I-G-I-T-A-L-V-A-U-D-E-V-I-L-L-E.com.